Our top story, it's barely been a little over a month since Liz Trust was appointed the Prime Minister of the United Kingdom. And today she is facing one of the biggest crises that uh, her government has encountered. Within just six weeks of his appointment, UK Chancellor Kwasi Kwarteng has been sacked today. This comes after a controversial mini-budget, a bailout of pension funds and rising mortgage rates. Kwarteng was flown back from the United States. He arrived at uh, Downton, uh, Downing Street, I beg your pardon, to meet with the Prime Minister, who is now scheduled to address a press conference. Shortly, Liz Truss's cabinet is facing its biggest rumble as backlash over the mini-budget continues to grow, leading to turmoil in the markets and the UK economy. So far, number 10 has declined to Mr. comment Speaker. on these developments. Liz Truss's press conference comes as speculation builds about a potential and anticipated U-turn on the mini-budget. The latest point of contention is the expected U-turn turn on the plan to freeze corporation tax. The government has been defending its mini-budget following major market turmoil since the announcement, along with a fall in the value of the pound and rise in the cost of government borrowing and mortgage rates. But will sacking Quartain work for Liz Truss? Remember, it was Liz Truss who promised most of these tax cuts. During her leadership campaign, in the eyes of many MPs, she is as much to blame as the Chancellor. Reports say discussions at all levels in the Conservative Party are currently on about whether the Prime Minister herself can survive, even if she has replaced the Chancellor. Kwasi Kwarteng's stint as Chancellor was perhaps as short as his rise to the top of politics was swift. Kwarteng was promoted to Chancellor by Liz Trust on the 6th of September from his previous post as Business Secretary under Boris Johnson. Within 38 days, he has been sacked. Kwasi Kwarteng is the second shortest serving UK Chancellor on record. The shortest serving Chancellor, Ian McLeod, died of heart attack. 30 days after assuming office. This was back in 1970. Now, since 2019, the UK has had four chancellors, including Nadeem Zawahi, who served the third shortest tenure with 63 days during a short-lived reshuffle under Boris Johnson and said Javed, who served, and Sajid Javed, who served 204 days, had the fourth shortest tenure on record. Now, as Chancellor Kwarteng insisted, his uh, tax-cutting mini-budget was the best way to encourage growth, saying the turmoil in the UK economy was part of global pressures caused by the Ukraine war and the pandemic recovery. But an open revolt among Tory MPs and a surge in the polls for the Labour Party forced U-turns on two of his major policies and the Prime Minister decided it was time for him to go. For more on that story, we're now joined by Vion correspondent Alex Isaac from London. Alex, what an earth-shattering development there. Barely six weeks in office, Kwasi Kwarteng now has the dubious distinction of actually having the second shortest term in office as the Chancellor of the Exchequer in the United Kingdom. In a moment, for the benefit of our viewers, we will read through the details of the resignation letter that he sent to Prime Minister Liz Trust, where it is very clear that he has been sacked because the first sentence of the resignation letter reads, uh, as he addresses the Prime Minister, you have asked me to stand aside as your Chancellor. I have accepted. Alex, take us through all the details of just what happened behind the scenes in the run-up to this dramatic sacking. Actually, it's more dramatic than how short he's actually been, Chancellor. It's the last 24 hours, barely 24 hours ago, he said that he was not going to be moving. He was adamant that his economic plan was on track. He was talking about the, the medium-term fiscal uh, conversation that he was having. All of this was quite positive. And then he rumours start flying as he is leaving the US and is returning to the UK that he has already been 
sacks. So that's a real change in just 24 hours there. But it did seem that this was going to be slightly inevitable after his mini budget came out and the markets dropped so dramatically. A historical low of the pound there that hasn't really been seen for quite a while. So there was always talk about that there was someone to blame for this and all of these flip-flopping U-turn policies that have been happening. The first one you mentioned about that 45p tax and now the corporation tax that we're expecting to be announced when Liz Truss, Truss speaks in an hour. So all of this was starting to build up that it looked like Liz Truss's credibility as Prime Minister and in fact her government was being called into question. So a scapegoat was needed and it seems that the Chancellor is just that scapegoat. And so we weren't expecting this to happen so soon. Trust also was suggesting that nothing will change, but obviously a lot has changed and we are expecting more changes to happen in her announcement later as to why exactly she's done this. All right, some dramatic developments there. Alex, stay on with us because Laura is also with us as we show our viewers that resignation letter that has been sent by Kwasi Kwarteng to Prime Minister Liz Trust. And as we speak, uh, Laura, if I could come to you, reports suggest that Jeremy Hunt may in fact be the next Chancellor to replace Kwasi Kwarteng. Do you have any confirmation of that for us? Just speculation at the moment, we think there's been a few names, of course, that have been banded around this morning. Sajid Javid, Nadeem Zahawi, they were the other two frontrunners in this potential contest to become the next Chancellor of the United Kingdom, the person that will stand beside Liz Truss when many of the big decisions are made, not least on the economy, but also they'll be expected, of course, to show her significant support when it comes to making decisions about other areas of the UK's social policy, its education policy and the like as well. It is one of the biggest jobs in government. It may well be then that Liz Truss is looking for somebody that has a significant amount of governmental experience. Jeremy Hunt has known for his time within the health department. He was health secretary for a number of years under the Conservative uh, government and he is pretty experienced when it comes to understanding the inner workings of government in itself. He's of course not one of those people that was seen as a staunch oppositionist uh, against Liz Truss when it comes to her policies but as I said earlier not necessarily one of the first names that sprung to mind when it was announced that Kwasi Kwarteng had been sacked as Chancellor. So now all eyes are going to be, of course, on that press conference that's expected in around about an hour's time now from Prime Minister Liz Truss. The expectation may be then that she appoints her new Chancellor before she faces the public there and probably questions from the press as well. And there will be big uh, questions to answer, of course, not least about this decision to get rid of Kwasi Kwarteng, but also on this speculation that she will U-turn on another financial and economic policy that was set out by him, this plan to cut the corporation tax that businesses pay. We've already seen this U-turn from Liz Truss on the decision to cut the taxes that high income earners pay. Now it seems the corporation tax could be about to rise as well. And that will bring into play a number of questions, not least about the reasons why, but also whether she is sticking by those promises that she made to Conservative Party members when she vied for that top job as Prime Minister. She campaigned to be a low tax leader and that could bring with it its own complications now if she U-turns again. All right. Is there going to be yet another U-turn by the British Prime Minister? Well, this certainly has been a disastrous beginning for the Liz Truss government. Uh, as you mentioned there, Laura, it'll be interesting to see what exactly the Prime Minister says in that press conference that is expected to get underway an hour from now. Laura and Alex, please stay on with us. We'll come back to you in just a moment. In the meantime, let's get a word in from the guest who joins us on the show at this moment, Kadira. Pethia Goda from London. He's an expert on international affairs. Thank you very much for joining us. The question that, that many, including Tories, are going to ask at this moment is, would it be fair to blame Kwasi Kwarteng alone for the mess and the utter turmoil that the British 
economy and government are in currently many are going to say isn't list trust equally responsible therefore questions are already being asked is it a only a matter of time before list trust herself is asked to step aside what is your take on that yes well we've already uh, heard uh, soundings from senior tory members um, senior politicians uh, questioning list trust's uh, leadership um, saying that she may uh, should think about stepping down as well, because it certainly isn't just uh, Quasi Quarteng's uh, fault. Uh, all these issues are uh, related to, uh, I feel, an overconfidence uh, in the government. Um, I mean, for context, you had, you know, for, for many years leading up to the 2019 election, the mainstream media was backing the Tories and very supportive of them. And this led to an overconfidence that in Boris Johnson, you saw him thinking he could get away with anything. And in Liz Trust, you're seeing her pushing extreme right-wing policies with regard to tax cuts. And, uh, you know, as Rishi Sunak had argued, these are not economically sound. Uh, and now it's coming back to bite her. All right, so the warnings that had been issued by Rishi Sunak to uh, Liz Trust ahead of that election uh, of the Tory party leader is something that's going to come back to haunt her. Many have been saying that Rishi Sunak has had uh, quite a few I told you so moments in recent weeks. Uh, Kadira, we'll come back to you in just a moment. Let me go back to... Alex, at this point, Alex, we know that the Prime Minister is going to hold a press conference a short while from now. The questions uh, obviously are going to be about the sacking of Kwasi Kwarteng. Maybe she will offer her reasons for sacking the Chancellor. Uh, also many names, including that of Jeremy Hunt, doing the rounds as someone who could possibly replace the Chancellor. But you know, I think it'll be safe to say that the biggest question that she's likely to be asked at this press conference is whether she accepts responsibility for the mess that the British economy is in right now. Well, that was an interesting question there. And, but it also seems we've also got some other news. Potentially, the Chris Philp is no longer also Chief Secretary to the Treasury. There's a lot of rumours now that he's also been asked to step down from his position. So that's two members of the Treasury there that will, may no longer be in charge that Liz Trust put in place. So it looks like she isn't going to be taking any of the blame if she keeps ousting these members that she's put in there. Because obviously, Chris Bell did make a few mistakes a couple of weeks ago when he said it was great that the pound was on the rise and it dipped straight after that. And he didn't ever really confront his questions and he didn't say in his statement that uh, he was wrong. He just kept backing out of that conversation. So it seems that Liz Truss is going to be putting a lot of blame on these people that she's going to get rid of in a way to suggest that, you know, she is still going to be standing strong and she wants people to believe her and trust in her. And she's going to be putting passing the blame to those other members of her cabinet. All right. So that is some important development that you're sharing with us, Alex. Uh, soon after the sacking of Kwasi Kwarteng as the Chancellor, we are now learning that Chris Philip is no longer Chief Secretary to the Treasury. So two sackings in just the last hour by Liz Trust. She clearly realizes that she is in the line of fire. Laura, this brings us back to the most fundamental question. Liz Trust seems to be on a firing spree. But isn't it true that the one person who's herself in the line of fire right now is Liz Trust herself. Therefore, can she just get away by sacking her ministers without actually taking responsibility for all the economic disasters that we've seen since she came to office? Clearly, the Tories themselves are very unhappy with her. Well, look. Well, a lot of the responses from Liz Truss when she's been questioned about these uh, issues within the economy, of course, we saw the pound fall sharply in value. There's been the Bank of England having to step in, not just to rise interest rates, but also, of course, deciding to buy long term bonds in a bid to try to stabilize the economy in the wake of that mini budget announcement. She has always said that a lot of these decisions, of course, were her uh, choice to try to build growth in the economy and try to strengthen the UK's economy. But when it came to the nitty gritty of those decisions, she was push pushing a lot of the responsibility towards the Treasury and towards the, the, the then Chancellor Kwasi Kwarteng. Now, you're right. 
There have been a lot of questions being thrown at Liz Truss about whether or not her plans and her policies are in fact the right way to move. And we've heard a lot about MPs within her own party talking about whether a U-turn might be needed on a lot of them, applying that pressure to the Prime Minister in a bid to try to turn things around for the economy. But Liz Truss will say that she has the mandate to lead. She was picked by Conservative Party members to be the Prime Minister of the United Kingdom. She's only been in number 10 for a very short while. Within that time, we've seen a lot of shifts within the United Kingdom, not least with the death of Queen Elizabeth II and the introduction of a new king, King Charles III. There is the ongoing war in Ukraine, of course. That's another issue that Liz Truss continues to point towards as being a reason for this economic turbulence. But economists, analysts and, of course, the markets are all saying that actually this budget that was set out by Chancellor Kwasi Kwarteng was one of the reasons why the markets became spooked. And there's a lot of questions there. So Liz Truss will now want to come out fighting. She'll come to this press conference with her reasons for removing Kwasi Kwarteng from the post of Chancellor. If she's sacked as well uh, that secretary, then it would appear that she's doing a bit of a clear out. And now there will be other questions asked about whether other members of the cabinet might be shuffled around in post, perhaps, to see if she can strengthen that team around her. She really needs to turn this around in terms of what people uh, think of her. We've seen YouGov polls released in the last 24 hours, basically saying that both she and Kwasi Kwarteng are pretty unpopular with the public. Now, that is not what any party within government needs to hear particularly when there's been a few conversations as well taking place about whether a general election should be called. If you are unpopular with the public, it's probably not ideal to call a general election when you are in post. But we'll have to see what the party want to do, because ultimately MPs will have a say on who leads them. And of course, what Liz Truss says in this press conference in around 40 minutes time, what plan she sets out, what justification she's given for these decisions that she's making, and whether she still maintains that those decisions to be a low-tax economy are the right ones for the United Kingdom, and whether she still wants to take that chance on it, uh, providing economic growth and building that future that she maintains that she can provide at the helm of the UK. All right, so a lot of questions arising there from these dramatic developments of just the last one hour. Thanks for that, Laura and Alex. Please stay on with us. Let me go back to our guest, Kadira. Kadira, lots of questions uh, arising at this moment. What is Liz Trust likely to say at this press conference? We've been told there have been two sackings in just the last one hour. Of course, the more high-profile one being that of Kwasi Kwarteng. The questions that are being asked is, can he alone be held accountable for the mess the British economy is in? Questions are also being asked about why Liz Truss did not pay heed to the warnings that were issued by many, including Rishi Sunak, about the dangers of her economic policies ahead of Liz Truss's election as the leader of the Conservative Party. Clearly, all of that is now likely to come back to haunt her. Therefore, is her position as the Prime Minister of the United Kingdom really tenable at this moment? Is she really in a position to say, I have the mandate? Well, I don't think she's in a position to say she has the mandate in terms of the British public because it was a very tiny portion of the population that uh, elected her, the, the Tory membership. Um, and I think that really goes to uh, what her problems are because, um, you know, she, she's run the government in the same way that she had run the uh, leadership campaign. And those old-fashioned talking points uh, about tax cuts boosting economic growth um, may work with the Tory membership, but they no longer hold water when it comes to the British public, um, particularly since the global uh, financial and economic crisis. Um, so that kind of uh, attitude is really at the core of what the problem is. And you know, the purpose of sacking ministers is to convey to the public that something has changed and those unpopular policies will no longer be there. But then if she gives a, a talk uh, and sort of sticks to her guns in, in terms of the core approach to the economy um, and maybe tries to uh, defer to the Ukraine war, as she often does, um, I don't think that's going to improve her popularity. And it's not going to reduce the pressure on her to resign. 
All right. So can Liz Truss really resist the pressure that she is now going to face with every passing minute to step aside as somebody who I think we can safely say has emerged as one of the most unpopular prime ministers of Britain in recent memory. Clearly very, very testing times, not just for the country and its economy, but for the prime minister and her government who have barely been in office for a few weeks and the sackings have already begun. Liz Truss is in the line of fire. Could she be next? What are the Tory MPs going to tell her to do? And also, it'll be very interesting to see what Liz Truss says at this press conference that she's going to address roughly 40 minutes from now. Is she going to apologize for the economic mess? How is she going to explain the sacking of Quasi Quarteng? Is Jeremy Hunt the new chancellor? And does Liz Truss take responsibility for everything that has gone wrong in recent weeks in Britain? Those are some of the questions we'll probably find answers to once that press conference gets underway. This is a story we keep uh, a very close eye on. On that note, Alex, Laura and Kadira, thank you so much to all three of you for joining us on that big breaking news.